Thank you, Father, for today. Lord, you spoke to me very clearly as we were in worship. You said to me, Though heaven and earth be moved, will you still praise me? Though your foundation is rocking, though everything seems like it's going upside down, will you still praise me? Oh God, I confess my weakness. Jesus, you are faithful when we are faithless. You are strong when we are utterly empty. In your light do we see light. God, I ask for your help in this word. Um, I thank you for such conviction breaking us so we may be filled again. Thank you that it is not us, but it is you in us. Jesus, we love you. Speak to our spirit. Speak to us deeply. Abba, help us to mourn and hate our sin. Oh God, we don't hate it enough. You hate anything that steals time or attention from you. The bride eyes not her garment, but her dear bridegroom's face. Oh God, we don't put our eyes on you. Oh God, I'm sorry. Help us to be broken even more. Oh God, help us to be nobodies. To just be unprofitable servants. Just say, thank you, Jesus. We get to be used of you. In your name, Jesus, I pray. Amen. Go to Colossians 4, verse 2. Text tonight. Um, <sighs> devote yourselves to prayer. It's a message that God is giving. It's a message that I've been speaking a lot about suffering, struggling, striving. Thomas Akempis has been saying that don't seek to be free from work or free or have rest from work. That's not he says, this is my paraphrase, that's that's not gonna happen. As long as you are in this physical body, in this physical world, with physical trials and difficulties, you will have strivings and toils and labors. Don't ask to be free from it, but ask for patience through it. It's it's of the equivalent of asking, God get me out of the valley. But no, he says, I'll be with you in the valley of the shadow of death. Devote yourselves to prayer. The word, I'm going to stop right there. The word there is proskartario. And it's a sense of earnest, seeking, longing after, fervency, Saying, I would rather go pray than do what I'm doing. Devote. Devote yourself to prayer. Stay alert. Keep watch. Awake. In it. To Thanksgiving. Guys, let me finish. At the same time, pray also for us that God may open a door to us for the message to speak the mystery of the Messiah for which I'm in prison, so that I may reveal it as I'm required to speak. Act wisely towards outsiders, making the most of your time. Your speech should always be gracious, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how you should answer each person. God bless your word, bless your your people this, this hour. Bless the messages as they go out. Satan, you've tried to steal worship, you're not going to. We bind you, we stand in authority by the blood of Jesus, by the water 
uh, and by the uh, Holy Spirit, by the word against you, by the cross, by the resurrection life. Last time I checked, there's an empty tomb to proclaim that my God is alive. You are not going to steal no matter how much you try to buffet us. Our God is with us in the furnace. In Jesus' name, I pray against all witchcraft right now, against all conspiracies, against all guilt, against all broke, uh, broken homes and lies and deceptions and um, demonic thoughts in our heads. In Jesus' name, you must be silenced now. You are not allowed here. This is a holy place. It's been a holy place since day one. You must flee because Jesus is on the throne. In Jesus' name, he paid the price. He rose again. He lives in us. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, devote yourselves to prayer. Be earnest. Persevere. Said, um, uh, I really had to convict him. So long as you live in this world, something's going to steal time. Something's going to want your attention. Why? Because who's the ruler of this earth? Ephesians says. That's nice loud. Prince Power of the Air. Is that the Lord? He is, he's in control over all. But currently, of this realm, where, where we are, it's the devil. It's Satan. So as a result, we're in his territory. Now, God is in control over all. And God is being God of very God, submitted himself to wicked men while he was physically on this earth. And when he rose again, he triumphed over them. The scripture says that he triumphed over every rule and authority. Colossians 1 says this. So, if he submitted himself to the will of human man, uh, of, of sinful man being perfect, he doesn't require anything of us that he didn't do himself. How many of us complain? How many of us? I don't want to wear the stupid mask. Guilty. That's me. I was there. Um... So, something will steal your time. It's not yours, it's God's. Something will try to steal your heart, steal your affection. And it's the devil. He's going to do everything in his capability to take from what you have, what's been given to you. We are only given a certain measure of days before either the Lord comes again in glory or he takes us home. What are you spending your time on? What are we listening to? What are we watching? Are we devoting ourselves to prayer? Or are we interested in media stories? Are we interested in... Oh, i got a few minutes. I'm not condemning anyone. I'm speaking from experience of brokenness. I'm speaking from... As a man who's been broken... Because I hate my sin. The Puritans used to say, Oh God, help me to hate my sin. Make me feel the weight of my sin. They would say this, guys. They would say, Make me feel the weight of my sin. Because God is so glorious. The word glory in Hebrew, in Hebrew is kavod. It's the same word for heavy, kaved. It's weighty. We treat our sin lightly. That's why God's glory is not there. The reason sometimes we don't experience the glory of God in our lives, I think we're too easy on, we, we make excuses. We're too easy on ourselves. Oh, it's no big deal. God forgives me. God loves me. Yeah, only if you ask for it. The Lord showed me something really interesting a little bit ago. Um, 
So I was driving to an appointment, uh, an energy audit, and my mind was flooded. Most of you know my testimony. I came out of sexual addiction. There's a lot of pornography in my life. Um, a lot of different people that I've hurt. And at times, it would be thrown in my face. And sadly, those images, as Vadi Bakum says, are HD, DVD, Blu-ray, high-definition recording. And the devil at any time, he doesn't play fair, goes click and plays it. Sometimes it's a particular scene, probably where you're weak, and he throws it in your face and speaks oftentimes superimposing, he's the great imposter, over your emotions without words to incite your flesh. Now, I'm speaking in very specific terms. And I'll speak in broad strokes, but this is critical in Jesus' name. I pray your blood right now over this message, over this section. I did not plan to speak on this, but Jesus has other plans. In Jesus' name, amen. This is critical. You ask for general forgiveness, you'll get it. You ask for specific forgiveness, you'll get it. You'll get specific forgiveness. Devote yourself to prayer. Speak specifically. Case in point. So I had a particular scene that was thrown in my face as I was driving. Very inopportune. There were times I would say, oh God, make it stop. And pleading the blood of Jesus and renouncing and cutting things off. And God, I thought I confessed this. And going down the line. You guys know what I'm talking about. It was as if in, in a split second. I was real with the Lord. I'm not going to go into details, but I spoke very specifically about whatever the detail was of, in my case, a certain image, 10 second clip, whatnot. And I spoke very specifically, graphically, whatever it took to set me free. Not just set me free. I don't want to just be set free and then be allowed to do whatever. I want to kick the devil in the teeth because I'm sick and tired of him taking over believers, causing them to be enslaved. So I spoke very specifically. I said, Jesus, I am seeing this image, this image, this person, whatnot. And for others who have different struggles, have you guys know what I'm talking about when you get specific. And I said, Jesus, this is not my thought. This particular deviancy is not my thought. This attraction, this act. And I'm very specific with it. Guys, stop being fake. Stop hiding behind your own gloss of, of religion. I'm speaking as a messenger of the Lord. Openly proclaim what it is. Don't hide it. You had a certain... Desire for food over french fries and hamburgers and that particular desire because of a certain person made you upset and you want to run to it or that was your past rather and you feel like the devil throws it in your head. Say, in the name of Jesus, that was not me. Or that was me, it's not me now. I don't like it anymore. Now, here's what happened. So I addressed specifically what the item was. The clip, what have you. And immediately, to the person that was involved in the clip, I started praying for them. I started praying for their heart, for their salvation, whether they're alive or dead. Doesn't matter. I started taking authority over the mountains of filth and saying, 
This is an abomination to the Lord God Almighty. I rebuke you. I take authority over you in Jesus' name by the blood of Jesus. I pray for XYZ person. I pray for this person that they would be saved. I even remember this, that they did this and this and this. And I pray that they would know Jesus. So I, and I walked away. So I came to my appointment and carried on. I walked away victorious. I felt as if I was behind enemy lines. Taking over the darkness. Pushing it back. It's time to devote ourselves to prayer. Are you in prison because of preaching the mystery of godliness, which is Jesus in you? Yes, suffering is necessary. It's to get to the point where Christ fills you. If you keep beating your head against the wall, you can't do a single thing unless Jesus be found in you. Let him burn you. Those things that come to you in your mind, they're so that you can stand up and fight. Keep watch with thanksgiving. When you have an inconvenience, do you say, Jesus, thank you so much I get to serve you? Or do you say, oh, shoot it. <sighs> Traffic. And the guys, I came out of Orlando and Fort Lauderdale. The traffic here is not bad. <laughs> but it still irritates us. It irritates me. Come on, I drove I-95, I-595, I-75, I-4. Okay? But it still irritates. Does it not? Because our heart is in the wrong place. Instead of, Jesus, thank you so much. I get another day to praise you. I get to kick the devil in the teeth so that others may know you. I get to keep watch with you. What did he want in the garden? Can't you stay one hour with me and keep watch? Can't you do it? And Paul says, keep watch. With Thanksgiving, be thankful. So, on the back end, it happened twice because I was driving back. It happened again. Went through the same process. Both times, I got to talk with Leanne. As to what happened. She told me, I have no idea what happened, but things went berserk in the house. Just fighting and just, I mean, inexplicable. And I said, what time? Between such and such. Makes sense. Because that was exactly the time that I was behind enemy lines in prayer and warfare. That's Jesus. The enemy hates when you're on the offensive. Stop asking for, for stuff to stop. Kick the devil in the teeth. God gave you his blood. What more do you want? What more do you need? I think there's a lot of idolatry. You know, we we watch things and we don't pray. D David Wilson had it right, called it a Babylonian idiot box. And now it's Babylonian digital idiot box. We would much rather hear commentators or different Bible teachers than go to the Word of God. I have... And, and I ask for accountability. I, I, want, I want to hate my sin. I want to run to Jesus. I want to run to prayer. I don't want to listen to anybody else. I mean, I'm, we, we post these messages for edification. And then he says, act wisely toward outsiders, making the most of the time. What you put in is what you're going to be filled with. What you sow is what you're going to reap. We need to stop, stop altogether. Electronic media. 
in a sense of in, in, in a sense of intentionality. It should not be the first thing we run to. If there's music to say, Lord, I want to have, I want to sing, to be intentional. Again, I'm speaking from a heart of brokenness. Your speech should always be gracious, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how you should answer each person. Pray also at the same time, verse 3, for us that God may open a door to us for the message to speak the mystery of the Messiah, for which I'm in prison. Guys, I... Guys, I'm, I'm distraught. I see our youth going to hell in a handbasket. They're lost. I see brothers and sisters in Christ that... We, we as a nation are not praying enough. Not, not in the terms of... I'm not trying to make it performance. We need to always examine ourselves. What am I running to? Because that means worship. The giving worth to. <sighs> Devote yourselves to prayer. Keep watch. Knowing our Savior is being crucified. And he's risen. Guys, our time is really short. Our time is really short. We need to seek to be holy and to encourage others. Holiness and peace, Hebrews. Seek peace among all men and holiness, but without which no one may see the Lord. Do you allow God to burn you, set you apart? For his holy purposes. Father. We confess now as a group. As a family. As a nation. We don't devote ourselves to prayer. Father we are not. In your business. We, we still fall short. We thank you for your grace. Because. You say to us. I, I still bled for that. You, you, you tell us, Lord. Jesus, I'm sorry. I am sorry for our... For our um, where... We devote time, your precious time, to things where you don't get the glory. We're not doing... We thank you. This is not a beat-up session. But we thank you as, as a good reminder that it's you who sanctify us, not we. Abba, help us to rest in your grace, but by the same token, keep that fire burning. And the Lord has reminded that the way you stoke a fire is by adding more wood to it. And in the Old Testament, wood was always a picture of humanity. Oxygen is another way to make the fan, the, the flame go. That can be seen as a spirit. Heat is God's processes. It's an imperfect picture. How much are you willing to admit before the Lord so that he can break you? In that brokenness, will you truly live? In the admitting, not just saying the words, Oh Lord, I'm a sinner. Forget. No, no. Lord, I don't know how to pray. I don't know how to confess Jesus, I don't know what you want to deal with right now, but reveal it to me. Please break me. Make me feel the weight of my sin. Show me what I'm holding on to. 
Jesus, I can't see it. I want to love you. Jesus, help me. I don't love you. Let's be real. Lord Jesus, I don't love you enough. Jesus, I'm sorry. I don't love you. I struggle. I fail. Lord, show me what I need. How uh, my heart would get in line. God, there's too much of me. Get me out of the way. God, help me. Get me out of the way. Spirit of God, I, I lay myself down. God doesn't just say, rend your clothes, rend your stomachs. He doesn't just say that. He says, rend your hearts. It's not about limiting food or eating only vegetables. Those things are good. Guys, our hearts are broken. They're, we don't know how to pray. Romans 8. The Spirit knows how to pray. The Spirit knows how we ought to pray. We need to ask Him. Lord, we need to confess. I'm sorry, Lord. I thought I knew how to pray. I thought I knew how to believe. God, I'm sorry. I thought I knew you. God, I, I'm, I thought that I had the prophetic. God, I thought I had the Holy Spirit. I'm sorry, Lord. I thought I knew all the answers. I thought I knew that I believed in you. I thought that I had full faith in you. I thought I had miracles. He's still God. And he's still on the throne. I'm sorry, Lord. Jesus, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I took you for granted. I put myself up, Lord. I'm sorry. God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I lifted myself up, oh Lord. I thought more highly than I ought to think, and I didn't think with sober judgment. Let's be real, folks. We're deceived. We think higher than we ought to think. All of us. And we don't consider others more significant than ourselves. We're too proud. We think we're Americans, and, and we have it all. Guys, we're, we feel entitled. It's my rights. No, it's not. And that's translated to the American church. Christianity. No, God is still God. We hold on to things too much. We think we have a natural ability to do things. No, it's given to you as a gift from above. You're not owed a job. You're not owed anything. Nobody owes you children. Nobody owes you food. Stop thinking higher than you ought to think. Think with sober judgment and devote yourselves to prayer. Keep watch and be thankful by saying, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for my difficulties. Thank you, my daughter. If not, I get a chance to serve my daughter. I get to bless her, not my daughter. It's a word for someone, word of knowledge. I get to serve my kids. I get to bless my husband, my wife. I get to be kind. You're teaching me patience. You're teaching me how to struggle and say thank you. You're teaching me Thanksgiving because you deserve all thanks. You're teaching me how to love and be patient. You're bringing the fruit of your Holy Spirit because you're making me a vessel of your glory. Thank you, Lord, because I don't deserve it. You want to use me as your precious jewel. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for using me as your choice vessel. Precious. Thank you that that person down the street is also one of your choice vessels, but they don't know it yet. Thank you I get to pray for them. Thank you, Jesus, I get to suffer with you, taking insult for you. Because that person has nowhere else 
to pour it out. Devote yourselves to prayer. It's time. Father in heaven, thank you for your words. In Jesus' name.